That's obvious. Madam Chair. Mm -hmm. Mr. Sapia? When you talk about cutting teachers, you, you cut it, the conversation is surrounded the dollars and cents aspect of it. Um, but I think what would happen is if you cut the amount of teachers you'd have, you'd increase the workload for the teachers remaining. That would cause, that would, that would, hang in there with me. There'd be some effects to that. First of all, I don't think they would be quite as proficient because their workloads would be heavier. That's just common sense. That's what you find in the business world. Number two, I'd like to share with you, my son has a very challenging course this year. I call this teacher. We're talking back and forth. She says, Mr. Sapia, well, I'm here every single day for three hours after school. I'm just wondering if you increased her workload, if she'd be able to take those three hours a day. And that's what we have. That is, I mean, I don't think money, you can't quantify that. So that's not something you're going to see here in the budget. That's not something you're going to see here in the budget. So what I care about is excellence, is academic excellence. And you're right, Mrs. Green. Throwing money at, a, at, at, at something doesn't necessarily make it better, but you have to look at and analyze all the consequences of your actions. And I don't think all those things have been measured. It's my understanding that Dr. Metzler and Ms. Armfield and others went line by line through the district budget and tried to find the best way to remove an enormous amount of money without impacting the quality of our education, without impacting our students. And this is this is what they proposed. Can I? Can I? Just, yes, uh, absolutely. When we're, when we're talking, and I'll use the number 130, and I apologize, Mr. Roth, if it's 135, or if it's 134, or if it's 137, right? So if you think of it this way, right, so that, that's how many students you're talking about, right? 130 kids. You're talking about if you're in the third grade now and you're going to fourth grade, you're just going to stay in the same school you're already in. Mm -hmm. So now we're just talking about 65 kids, Mrs. Green, maybe moving to the middle school or going back to the school where they spent the beginning of their educational career least disruptive to get to this really this number that they picked for us to get to we're at it with the least amount of disruption in this district to call it punitive uh, you know it's it's uh, that, that's ridiculous right it's it's the absolute <coughs> best way to get to that number that they asked us to get to based on all the criteria and all the work that we've been doing since they came up with this out of the blue right. on the Tuesday before Thanksgiving and said oh by the way uh, come back at this number, not mentioning it once the entire fall as we went department by department by department. No checkpoints, no anything. We, we cautioned them last year when they picked this arbitrary number out of the blue and said we want a flat budget. Um, Mr. Stolgan just said not so fast. There's lots of things we don't have control over. You know, we know some contractual obligations we're going to have. We know some health insurance, retirement. All these things are going to be in here, and we're going to have a major cut. This 1.8 is really more like 4. This is a 3-year-old number by the time we get to use it. 3-year-old number. Same dollar is not worth as much 3 years later, Mrs. Green. Right? So we're doing the best we can with the least amount of disruption. And I think the most responsible, respectful way to make sure that all of our kids get all of their services and that we don't uh, we don't start hacking away at all the great things that are going on in this district that's the reality mrs. green thank you you're welcome so I was just going to also say that um, we have we have student teacher ratios um, dictated by board policy that must be respected and just just to sort of summarize it's my it's my understanding you spent the better part of a week going through line item by line item program by program student teacher ratio from building to building to figure out where you could cut so I think it is um, very ambitious to think that we can sit here right now and sort of pull out of thin air what we might what we might cut you know um, this was this has been gone over by, by a fine tooth comb it's not that we can't make suggestions but the works really I think I'm hearing the work <coughs> has been has been done and done carefully um, I have a few people who want to speak, Mr. Collins and then Mr. Blair. Yeah, so um, it, I think you meant class size when yeah, you meant uh, when you spoke teacher. to that, I did. I meant I meant yeah. stu uh, student teacher ratio within yeah class size. That's what I meant. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, so Mrs. Green mentioned punitive, but if you if you look at the sheet that we were given, <laughs> elementary building direct cost per pupil. Um, and Dr. Metzler spoke to this. When you look at the numbers on that sheet. It, I don't know how you could call it punitive. Um, it, it's just, it, it's obvious. Uh, if you're looking at trying to, to squeeze savings out of a school district, 
uh, cost per pupil per building is a good way to look at it and, and see what you can do to, to trim. Um, Mrs. Green mentioned uh, that the first uh, attempt to get to the, the, the level budget was uh, a hit to the customers. Um, but I, I counter that the presentation that Mr. Green made to the Budget Committee wanted to cut 76 uh, staff members throughout the district. And I'm not sure who you think that's going to be, but that would also be a hit to the customers, the students. <coughs> Absolutely, it would be a hit. So, and and you know, I did I did do a presentation that that countered a lot of what he said um, because a lot of the numbers that he had uh, were either you know he created them uh, or uh, I, I don't know where he came from. Uh, but it, it's it's uh, to say it's punitive is it, just wrong. I, I just don't understand it at all. I think it's uh, I think it's it's not responsible for a board member to say that at all. I think it's insulting too. Mr. Blair was next. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't. Um, one of the things that I see is the willingness to compare our district to other districts when we try to find ways of looking at whether we're in line with other schools and I, uh, what I fail to see in a lot of these comparisons is the ancillary things that we provide in this district you heard a presentation earlier today by mr. D in our music program and that we sent more than double the amount of kids to all state than any other district in the state and so when you look at the extracurricular type of learning activities that we provide at this school such as our music program such as our uh, arts our theater our sports etc I think you have to t the AP the project lead the way you have to take those into consideration as well because they all affect staffing and student teacher ratios that we look at and so I, I I think we need to caution ourselves when we try to do comparisons to other schools that purely look at numbers and don't look at services offered and <coughs> other things just not just kneecap scores or not just star scores but other measurement criteria you cannot take them in a vacuum okay. thank you thank you mr. Blair mrs. Sherman yeah I, I've been um, thinking a, a lot about comparing a cooperative school district, which Timberlane is, to Londonderry or to Salem, which are not cooperative school districts, we have some different situations here. So in Salem, yep, they're closing a building and just moving those kids to another Salem school. We don't have that same situation here. And unfortunately, or f I think it's sad, but we have two buildings in Sandown, one that is in pretty tough shape we didn't put any money into that kitchen and we're spending a heck of a lot of money over there that, that seems to be the all, only alternative is to combine what we can you can't compare us to Londonderry or to Salem when you start <coughs> talking about reduction in staff and reduction in, in kid kids coming to school it's compare us to another cooperative school district like Winnicunit which was not part of Mr. Green's analysis which I was quite surprised about so I don't like that I'm not done I don't like this I don't want this to happen I'd like the budget committee to look at this and say wow what we, we can't do this it's not fair um, and not let this have to go to the voters mrs. green the cost per pupil in our district has risen 44 <coughs> percent no, it, it has no so if we, <laughs> it will, it will, we, when you take into account this current year's budget, if you, if you take into account the increase in this current year's budget, then the cost per pupil is going to have gone up 44%. Except you that don't, is that's, an outrageous. That's not how you calculate cost no. per pupil, though. Okay. 
look. And you know that. And no, I don't that. know that. Yes, and do. it's absolutely but true that our cost per pupil uh, is going out of control. And so, it ha I, excuse me, I have the floor. You do have the floor. Thank you. So, all of a sudden, we're not saying, oh, our cost per pupil is so high, we have to close the district. No. We what we have to do is control our spending we have to control the spending well, and spending. if the best way to do it is to close a school then that that is an option on the table and I'm not saying uh, you know it's out of the question but what I am saying is that it shouldn't be the first resort and I I do not feel that this was an honest try and that's my point there's plenty of other things and by the way it's not just comparing a district it's if you actually compare the staffing in one school with the same population to the same uh, staffing with a school of any, uh, the similar popu uh, student population you will see that the staffing matrix are way off in Timberlane it's not just from district to district it's actually per school to per school with the same population there's a problem in this district that we have not adjusted staff to the falling enrollment and that is our fundamental sure structural right. problem thank you for thank you for voicing your opinion mr. Appleton has been waiting to speak so um, <coughs> can they hear me I'm like, we can yep all right um, so Timberlane has a really neat culture where as a student you get out what you put in there's never been any problems with being held back by by resources if a, if a student wants to learn more if they want to take part in AP if they want to be involved in sports and music they have those opportunities oh, you're fine honey keep talking because Timberlane has made it possible we find a way to make it work and I think that's an amazing thing we have here I mean as a student, I've had probably the best high school career a kid could ask for. I mean, I've part participated in sports. I've been a part of some really neat things that wouldn't be there if we didn't if we didn't have this attitude where we can make it work for the kids. Like I hear stories from other schools where kids can't run track because they don't have uniforms or the things like that. Where it seems like here we we take pride in, in a higher standard. Um, and I think it reflects, when you invest in students, when you invest in students, it pays dividends. We come back to the community, we come back, we try and we maybe start a business, teach at the schools. I mean, look at, look at all the examples of, of people who just, who teach in the buildings. Um, Coach Chuljan, he, he came to Timberlane, he, he was able to wrestle and do all these cool things. And look, he came back and he started the most dominant wrestling program in New England. Um, two, two, of the, two of the assistant coaches for football, Coach Brown, Coach Champion, those guys came here and they came back to the community because they had those opportunities. And I think that's a really important thing to keep, keep in the back of your mind when talking about the budget. I mean, you can ask my AP Gov teacher, um, all about fiscal conservatism. I'm, I want I want to be responsible with the taxpayers' money, but I think that this is one of those situations where investing in the students really can pay off. Your future, Mr. Blair wanted to speak. I believe. Am I correct, Mr. Blair? And then I'll get to you, Mr. Sapien. Mm -hmm. So I have a question directed at Dr. Metzler. Um, one of the comments that I heard today was that uh, this was the only option looked at. Uh, was this the only option you looked at or did you look at other options and based on the other options you analyzed this is the one you felt was best so that's why you're presenting this to the board rather than presenting all your options to the board that's correct um, 